In the initial construction of these buildings, they were originally designed. In the initial construction of these buildings, is it reasonable to suggest that they were designed in such a way to be able to take multiple plane views? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Will you take yes for an answer? <laughs> Good. So uh, yeah, it was designed to take multiple hits of the largest aeroplane known at the time, which was uh, um, 707. 707. And uh, you, know, you saw that the, the thing stood, both those towers stood for quite a while after the played impacts on the building number one. Uh, which hit kind of in the middle of that facade, you could run another plane into the back of it, it was seriously. And uh, it's really because it, the external coils are there to deal with bending, not with gravity loads. And as it was a, a, not a windy day, um, there was total so stress in the outer columns, which was a part of it, and the opposite side was still Yeah, I think I'd be the one who would have been that. So, you commented that the aluminum is silvery. So, yeah, I've seen it with videos. How, if you increase the temperature more and more, how long would it stay silvery? Uh, or would it also turn orange-yellow? Uh, well, I don't know, actually. I have looked, I've searched the literature for what this, this call, you call it the uh, emissivity of the metal, of the aluminum at higher temperatures, apparently hasn't been uh, a measure. I can't find it. Yes. Because some, if there's somebody claiming that this is aluminum at 1500 degrees coming out of the tower, and I say, okay, <laughs> it's okay with me, <laughs> because if aluminum can reach a temperature of 1500 degrees, then the question is, how did it get at that temperature? But uh, I think this has not been uh, recorded. Frank and the, the point is that if, if, it, start, if it, it gets liquid at 660 degrees and then it starts running, but then why should it be held back? But there's, yeah, Frank maybe knows. Should come forward. Yeah. Excuse me, I, I think yeah. Stephen James has got an answer to this. He has uh, melted aluminium in an iron pot until the iron pot was red hot, glowing, and then poured the aluminium out and it looked silvery. So the aluminium had to be the same temperature as the iron pot. I think he's proved the fact that in daylight, aluminium at the, at the temperature of molten iron is silvery. And if you look at the emissivity, of course, it, it, the emissivity of the aluminium is extremely low because the reflectivity is extremely high. Whereas iron's the other way around, iron's at a low, uh, <laughs> it's got a high emissivity and a low reflectivity. That's why iron and aluminium look so different from their top. This may be a little off topic, but uh, do you have an opinion or an explanation on who may be responsible for burning? <laughs> I'm not talking politics, so... I'll give you an answer to that question, who is responsible. It is not for the scientists to answer that question. It is for the scientists to find out what happened, and for other people to find out who did it. This is a pretty good cool sort of um, display you have here. Have you and you tried the mainstream media to get this out on ABC or BBC? Uh, 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 so, yeah. So, have you tried to get it to the main media? We are, we are, we are at their throats constantly. They are slammed the door. Thank you.
Uh, I'm sorry if this is a naive question, but um, it's, September 11 has always, um, 9 11 has always fascinated me a bit. When you fly down the Hudson, uh, Ground Zero has buildings on two sides. Uh, so there are a high rise buildings one side and then the other side, and then they have the Hudson's here. If you want to fly down the Hudson and hit these buildings, then presumably uh, either the plane would get caught inside the buildings and there would be an explosion, or the plane would fly out the other side, in which case it would hit buildings here or here. I've never been able to quite rationalise that. <coughs> If you were to have a bit of a... Yeah, but it would go over. If, if the plane would either remain inside the Twin Tower and explode, or alternatively, I mean, I couldn't see the plane causing an implosion, which is what's being suggested. It would surely so. cause an explosion. What? If the uh, list report has some nice animations showing that the plane that hit the World Trade Center one shattered on impact into a zillion pieces. Yeah. Interestingly enough, if you go to the Pentagon report, which looked at the aeroplane that hit that, it has managed to fly intact through a large solid masonry wall and then it strewed itself past the internal columns. If ever you want to see something so ridiculous, go there. But your question is that the plane would have disengaged the million bits, there's a big fireball when the um, fuel was ignited, the engines uh, and other parts of the plane did actually go right out the back of some of the buildings and works found some way away to other streets. So, I don't know about the World Trade Center School, I can't do all that. Oh, yeah, it's the engine and the front wheel went straight through Tower 2. So are you suggesting then that the planes did actually hit the buildings, but they were a diversion? I think the planes were very real. They definitely hit the buildings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've, I've got no doubt about that. And so I don't quite understand what the plan is like. Diversion. Diversory. Yes, but they were in fact... Someone had set this up to look like the planes had brought the towers down. The planes themselves could not, did not bring the buildings down. Something else 